Hello, I'm Delia Colon, and this is WEDU Arts Plus. Fiber artist Anika Jones combines paint and embroidery to create stunning portraits. Her work is symbolic of current social issues as well as her Caribbean roots and has garnered national attention. A lot of the times, the first question that I get is, what is the material that I used, or what's that texture? And the second thing is, who is the girl? Are you related to her? Where did she come from? How do you know her? And so, with that first question, is that exactly what I want you to do. Question what the texture is on the piece. Go closer to the piece, kind of figure out, and look through the cracks of the piece and realize that it's not just thick paint on the surface, it's actually condoms beneath that but also leading from the texture of the condoms into her actual face, you notice that she's kind of representative of young girls of color that have been put in the situation of sex trafficking or human trafficking. What I do is, based on different images, I kind of collage them in Photoshop so that I come up with this image that looks like it's one person, but it's actually a collage of different girls. It's basically that symbol of representing every young girl of color. Nanika's work is delicate and detailed. She's intricate in every element of the texture she's working on, the, the tone and temperature of her works, the color choices. And so if you like something that's rich and full of all overlapping meaning using color and form, Nanika's work really satisfies that. But it also has a deeper context. And so she uses the different forms of art to really explore things that are often difficult to say out loud. She takes on amazing subject matter, really putting a mirror up to society when I view Anika's artwork, one word comes to mind. One, one word would dominate my thinking, and that would be profound. And a piece that comes to mind is a piece she did on cancer awareness, where she actually created the image of a lady with one of her breasts removed, so that I saw that the work she produced was not surface level type art, but very profound, deep thinking productions. Since coming to the US, I think I've developed more of my narrative side of my artwork because I had a bit of technical skill before, but I still felt like that, that artistic voice was lacking. And when I really started to get into my different classes at UT, I realized that I didn't want my work to just sit on the wall at a gallery or just sit on a wall at your home. I wanted it to reside beyond that and reside in your mind and evoke some kind of emotion out of you. Eneko was one of our four daughters, our last daughter, and Eneko was always independent. One of the things I clearly remember of Eneka growing up is that ability to take charge of her own life and be in a position to recognize where she wants to go and what are the next steps. I actually grew up in Trinidad and Tobago. I was born in Trinidad and eventually I actually realized that I had a passion for art and after placing first in the Caribbean in my high school exams, I decided that it was best that I continue to pursue an education in art and try to pursue a career in art. Being influenced by the Caribbean culture, I also wanted to experience cultures outside of that. And so that kind of drew me to coming to the U.S. and looking into different schools here. When I came to the University of Tampa, I took a few classes, a few sculpture classes, drawing classes, etc. But it was truly when I took my experimental painting class that I found my artistic voice because I kind of loosened up a little bit. The professor, Chris Valley, told us he wanted us to create a painting without using paint. Immediately I was like, how am I going to create a painting without using paint? Like, how am I going to find materials that I can manipulate to look like a painting? And so that's actually when I did some research and I discovered embroidery 
and I just continued developing my work from there and kind of learning the material and the technique but also learning how can I incorporate meaning behind this and how can I make these pieces narrative. She really started a lot of her growth while she was here at UT. And so she really developed a following starting in 2017, 2018. And her background as a marketing major also really kind of led her to springboard into what a lot of artists need to do, especially young and up and coming artists need to do, which is self-market. My mom used to sew. She would always have me thread needles for her. That was like the only thing that she would let me do. So I think now I'm like a pro, basically, at threading needles. It's kind of interesting that now I'm kind of like a seamstress, but I'm sewing these portraits. Coming up to my final graduation show and then having COVID happen and the pandemic happen. So I had graduated virtually and about three months after that, I actually got an email from one of the art directors at Time Magazine. And in the email, he had expressed to me that he was blown away by the fact that my work was hand embroidered, which was exactly what I learned at the University of Tampa. And he's telling me that my work is worthy of being on the cover of the magazine. And after doing the cover for Time Magazine, so many opportunities have come to me. I'm kind of on that journey now of kind of balancing that confidence and being able to say, yes, I am an artist, and yes, I am a contemporary artist, and I will be successful. Anika is truly special. She sees things in such a positive way while taking on very difficult subjects. And that is something that we need today. To learn more, visit artuhungry.com.